have you ever submitted a form like this? Can I see your hands? Okay, what many? Have you ever read headlines like those? Okay. It is known that cyber criminals go after personal and financial information. But do you know how much it takes to produce headlines like those? Do you know how much expertise it requires? Nowadays, anybody can become a cyber criminal. And uh, you could attack, for example, websites, which are one of the most targeted assets these days. And the reason is really simple. Websites are exposed to the internet, and they gather a lot of information about their users. Here we're talking about information like usernames, passwords, credit card data, and so on. Let me show you how a website works in a nutshell. Uh, here we have a diagram with a user, a website in the middle, and a database. The database is used by the website when it needs to uh, store or retrieve data. So let's suppose that the site that we have here on the screen is an online store, and the user is uh, interested in a specific product. So this is how it works. First of all, the user will click on links and buttons and so on from the browser. And this will generate a request. In this case, the user wants to uh, get information about the product. When the request comes to the website, the site will then match this request to a predefined database command. Such command will be forwarded to the database, and the database will process it. Once the processing is done, the database will return the information, in this case, info about a pair of shoes, and the site will present it to the user. And then the user can just continue with the shopping. Have you seen this before? Yeah? So websites can be attacked in many different ways. And one of them is SQL injection. Injection is a type of vulnerability which allows an attacker to send malicious database commands. And this will allow him to manipulate the database. So in practice, he can get access to information that otherwise is off limits. Let's consider the same site as before, but this time vulnerable to SQL injection. And this time we have an attacker who is ready to exploit it. So this is how it works. First of all, the attacker will send some malicious input to the website. And by the way, if you are wondering about uh, what malicious input looks like, here you have an example. In this case, our attacker is going to uh, attempt to retrieve information like usernames and passwords from the database. So when the command arrives to the site, the site will take its predefined database command and it will combine it with the input given by the attacker. And that will be forwarded to the database. The database will process it and then the output will be sent back to the site. In this case, what we get back is usernames and passwords. And finally, the site will forward that to the attacker, and then we have a bridge. Is this something new? Well, injection has been known since 1998, and this is a type of flaw which arises by using poor programming techniques, which leads to the question, shouldn't developers know about it? Well, it depends on the skills and the knowledge of the developer, but what I can tell you is that OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, they spend a fair amount of efforts showing how to program securely and at the same time raising awareness among developers. They also have what they call the OWASP Top 10, and this is the list with the top 10 most important security risks which affect web applications. Since 2004, injection has been in that list, and if we have a look at the two last editions, injection was number one risk. So if we look at the situation today around IT security, we have lack of awareness among users and developers, 
vague regulations, lots of bugs, which may come maybe unintentionally, un unintentionally while programming. But if we combine everything, what we get is an ecosystem full of vulnerabilities and lots of attackers who are willing to exploit them. Do you know how much expertise you need in order to, for example, exploit a SQL injection? The only thing you need is Google. If you search on Google, you can find lots of tools which can run automatically SQL injection attacks. You don't need to have any knowledge about how the vulnerability works in the background. And if you don't know how to use the tool, well, you can go to YouTube, and there you will find a huge collection of videos showing you how to run them and what type of uh, output or result you should get from them. Let me show you how an injection can be exploited in practice. Here we have one of these tools running against a vulnerable website. And what the tool does is, first of all, detect if the site is vulnerable. From there, it will match a malicious database command. And when this database command is identified, then it will use it to retrieve information from the database. In this case, we will see that the tool is able to pull out all the database contents, including usernames and passwords. Once again, the result, usernames, passwords, personal information, or credit card data, much more. So now that you hopefully understand SQL injection, are you ready to submit a form like this? Injection is not the only way that an attacker or cyber criminals can use to get their hands on your information. There are many other technologies which can be exploited. For example, have you ever connected to a network like this? Uh, yeah, yeah, many of you. Well, when you use wireless technology, you have a device which is communicating through uh, radio waves. And wireless, if we analyze that, and we bring an example from the real world, we, we, what we can see, it's actually like two people speaking. So when two people are, are speaking, we have the possibility to eavesdrop our communication. The same can happen with wireless devices. Web and email are two popular services which uh, use unencrypted protocols. This means that when you are connected to an open Wi-Fi, which is unencrypted by default, and you start surfing the web, for example, with without any sort of protection of, of encryption, then if somebody eavesdrops your communications, he or she will be able to read the contents of it. So in order to understand this, uh, we have prepared a lab here. Um, we have a Wi-Fi router, which is broadcasting a network, and we will need uh, volunteers. Please welcome them to the stage. <clears throat> so the idea is that the volunteers, they will use their smartphones, so they will be able to connect to this uh, wireless network, and then the site will uh, prompt them so they can just type a username and password. Here they will send their online banking credentials. I'm just kidding. They will just send any random value, and we will present it here on the screen. I will uh, play the... Uh, the attacker, the role, and uh, what I will do is to grab or cap capture these communications as they flow through the air. And note that I'm not connected to the network at all. If you would like to join us, you can use your smartphone or a tablet, and you can connect to a TEDx demo. You can open your browser and visit the address that you see over there. But please keep in mind that if you connect to the network, the MAC address and unique identifier of, of your device will be shown on the screen. And of course, anything you submit will be as well recorded there. So if you, if you, feel, if you feel comfortable with that, you know, feel free and join us. Okay, 
So here we have our volunteers ready. And in a moment, we will see how the, the attacker is setting up his computer. Uh, this is running a program, which is, by the way, open source. Anybody can download it from the internet. And it's using a specific wireless card. It's a USB that, a card that you can buy on, online. But it has the capability to sniff the waves which are transmitted through the air. So when this program is collecting the data, after a while, we will analyze it quickly and then extract the values, usernames and passwords, once again, that we will, uh, that we will have there. <clears throat> so let's just give it a minute. And here you can see the, uh, the attacker's machine. We are going to run the program. And when we run this, you see lots of clients. You see the, client, the, the column over there growing and growing. The data column in the middle, you see increasing the numbers. This is packets or information which is being sent by all of these smartphones, computers, tablets, wherever it's, it's connected right now. So the volunteers here are sending their uh, credentials to a site, just like I said, which is hosted by the router. And in a moment, we will see the, the contents of it. Are you done? OK. So we're going to stop and then check the results. And here we can see some examples of what it was sent by some users. OK. Thank you so much. Please. So now that we've seen how these wireless and SQL attacks work in practice, how can we protect ourselves? Well, if we could have better regulations, if we could increase awareness among users and developers, if we could enforce encryption everywhere, that would give us a much better security level in general. However, not all of, all of these measures can be implemented by a user easily. What can we do then? Well, if you use services like web or email that support SSL, that is highly recommended to you to be used. SSL uses seamless encryption and that will protect your communications while you are transmitting it. Today, all major browsers and email clients support the use of SSL, which means that if the service is supporting it, then you only have to enable uh, a simple setting in your device. But maybe the most important countermeasure of all is use your head. You should consider your digital self like an extension of the real, the real world. Who do you trust with your information? Will you share your secrets with a room full of strangers? If we try to compare digital situations to what we experience in real life, that will help us making much better decisions in cyberspace. So before you submit, just think. Thank you. Thank you.